Right. <laughs> right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, our talk is called uh, Anatomy of an Action, and uh, we're going to talk about how you could use um, events in OpenStack to debug and monitor a system. Uh, my name is Vladik. I'm contributing to Nova. Go ahead. <laughs> cool. Um, my name is Brian Chang. I'm a contributor to Slometer, and we're both Red Hat engineers. I guess I'll start off. Um, so OpenStack is a pretty amazing thing. Like you can do pretty much anything you want with it. You can create virtual machines and to do like parallel computing and tackle huge problems. You can provision test development machines at like a snap of a finger without having to wait for your IT department to build you a physical machine. You can store your data in one place in the world and access it in a completely different place in the world. And you can do, do all of this with just like a few clicks of a button, which is pretty cool. But OpenStack, like all good ideas, when it works, it's wonderful. But in execution, sometimes not so much. So when you use OpenStack, you might see various things such as this. So when you delete a snapshot you, you just created, it might tell you that you can't do it. And it won't tell you why. You just you can't do it. Uh, or it might tell you you're not allowed to do it, even though you have all the permissions to do it, to delete it. Because sometimes OpenStack knows better than what you know. So. Uh, also, sometimes when you create an instance, it might fail, and it'll tell you to try again. But it's cool, because you didn't want it to do it now. You wanted to do it later. So you just try again later. <laughs> and it seems pretty animate that you try again later giving you that false glimmer of hope that it actually might work the second time around. <laughs> but it won't because it's actually a very real error. So it leaves you kind of wondering what's happening. And most of the errors that it gives you don't really, doesn't really give you any good information about what went wrong. And when it does give you good uh, information what went wrong, it's sometimes wrong itself. Like the error it'll tell you is irrelevant to what actually happened. So if you're lucky, you actually might find the error on some <laughs> random host on some, in some random log and for some random service. And for us, it's, it's OK, though, because we all have time to do this to debug the entire system that way. So to summarize, debugging OpenStack is very hard. Um, every action you do in OpenStack actually has multiple steps. And any one of those steps can fail. Um, on top of that, a lot of the steps are asynchronous calls, so that can lead to a lot of various uh, timing issues, which can be very hard to track down. And also, because it's a distributed system, that failure might happen in some random place in the world or random node that to find it is very difficult. And while there are solutions out there to gather logs from different systems, uh, in the end, debugging log files is difficult. There's very little schema or standardization across logs. And to find errors that way is not the easiest thing in the world. So one thing we will emphasize in this talk is how understanding the context and flow of the events in your system can help you debug uh, your OpenStack environment. All right. So let's go through one of the most common, uh, most common use cases is um, creating an instance. Um, and this is basically a sim simplification of what happens when you create an instance. So it all starts with the user sending a request to the API, which goes later to conductor, then to the scheduler to find the relevant, uh, to most suitable host to start the, uh, the instance on. Then uh, to the compute uh, manager, where it's trying to build the resources. Then it will call um, Neutron to create networks. And then it may call Cinder to create storage. And eventually, we should have uh, a running VM. It's all great, but um, this pretty much may fail in, ev in every step of the way. It may fail here, or here, or here. And um, fortunately, for most of the steps, Nova will send a notification <coughs> Sorry, that will get uh, eventually emitted to the queue. 
And um, it also will send a notification when something fails. Pretty much uh, most of the services will emit some set of notifications. Usually those revolve around CRUD type operations. So now that we have uh, uh, completed our tasks for creating an instance, uh, we have notifications from all the components stored in the queue. The next step would be to consume those messages. So Salometer is the telemetry project in OpenStack. Um, there's various components. Salometer, there's a polling aspect, there's a notification handling aspect, and storage, and alarming. Uh, for this part specifically, we'll talk about the notification handling part. Um, so basically what the not notification agent does is it consumes messages off the queue using Oslo messaging. So you can use, so it supports RabbitMQ and hypothetically Cupid and ZeroMQ. Um, and so whenever a message uh, gets emitted from one of the services, such as Nova or Cinder, Salamer picks it up and processes it. Uh, Salamer's original, original purpose was to take the notification and build meters or measurable data from specific attributes that were contained within the payload, but there's also more things that it can do. Um, what Slammer does is actually it builds an event from the notifications that are emitted from the different services. So looking, looping back to what we had for the original create instance use case, uh, the scenario looks like this. So you have an incoming notification from the various steps in the create instance action and what Slammer does is it listens to all those event, all those notifications and it builds a single event and one or more meters from it. So what is an uh, event in Salometer? Um, it was an originally implemented in Icehouse as part of uh, the StackTac integration efforts. And in Kilo, we kind of finished that off, uh, finished off most of the functionality there. Um, Basically, an event is what, uh, it represents a state of an object in, op in open OpenStack service at any given point in time. Um, and it's built off information we get from the info and error level notifications that Nova and the rest of the services emit. And lastly, what Slumber event does is that it normalizes these messages that we receive. So a lot of the payloads that we get from each of the services either have no schema or differing schemas. And what Salometer can do is it can take the schemas, the, uh, the schemas from the various events and remap them to common names such a, so if you have a resource ID in, ver in a different location across different pay uh, notification messages, it can remap them into a single place. Or it can also enforce a data type on attributes that have inconsistent uh, data types. So the Slammer event model looks like this. Um, basically, each Slammer event contains three uh, key attributes. It has a message ID, which uniquely identifies the notification message. There's an event type to classify what kind of event it was. And there's a timestamp to that of when the event happened. There's additional uh, attributes that it contains that are optional. So there's traits. Traits are basically queryable index attributes. It's uh, related to the remapping that I was mentioning earlier. And there's also a raw attribute, which is pretty much a full payload dump of the entire notification messages. Uh, it's mostly used for if you have like auditing purposes, uh, use cases where you would need to keep data around for a year or so. Um, so that the raw data is actually unindexed, and from a Slammer API point of view, it's actually not queryable. Um, so what event Slammer does with the events is that it passes all the events through a pipeline, and through this pipeline, you can configure them, to, configure different actions to be done to each event. Um, so if you want a certain certain set of actions to be applied to event types A, B, C, you can 
push them into one pipeline and a different, if you want another set of actions done on it, event types X, Y, Z, you can push them into another pipeline. And we also support the ability to publish to multiple targets. Uh, you can write them to a database, a file, a queue, or a HTTP target. Um, some of the databases we support are MongoDB, SQL, uh, and Elasticsearch. And uh, we'll probably go into more, we'll go into more details on Elasticsearch later. All right, so when we're debugging a system, it's um, usually better to understand the context and the, in which flow the error happened. We can, of course, uh, go through the multiple logs that um, OpenStack produces. However, these are gonna be spread uh, across multiple servers. Uh, we can, of course, centralize the logs. However, even there, there will be a lot of noise in it and it will be very hard to find the exact error and the flow it was in. With events, uh, the data that we get is normalized and uh, we could clearly see the error and its flow. One event, of course, doesn't provide much, uh, doesn't provide much. however, collectively, it, uh, it, has, it, it is meaningful. Uh, with that said, events are not coming to, um, to replace the logs in any way, but um, they can provide a quick indication of where the problem is. So how do we, tie events emitted by all the services to, uh, to Solometer. Of course, it depends uh, on the use case. Uh, we can have different views with events. Uh, we wanted to show events in a way that would help us debug a system. So now I'll show you some screenshots of what we did with the last search, uh, with the last search backend in Solometer and the events that OpenStack commits. Um, so just as a, a little background, if you don't know what Elasticsearch is, it's a document-oriented uh, schema-free database. Uh, it's built on, on top of Apache Lucene, which is kind of designed for full-text uh, search, searching, which is pretty useful when it comes to events and log uh, handling error messages. Um, it's a distributed, highly available, real-time database. So. There's a bunch of keywords there. And it also comes with a Kibana, which is a GUI interface to, which allows you to query uh, the database. So this is a screenshot of Kibana, which is the GUI interface. Um, when I previously mentioned that you couldn't query raw data in Solometer, but one of the unique things about using Elasticsearch is that it actually indexes all the fields for you. So you can query anything you want. Um, you can kind of explore the data as you please uh, using Kibana as a query language. Um, so you can filter on, at the top right, you'll notice there's like a last 60, day, last 60 days text there. You can kind of filter your, your uh, data based on when the time range you want to be researching on. So if you know that there's, when the, the error happened, you can kind of drill into to certain time frames so you don't have to query an entire database. Um, you can filter on absolute and relative time ranges. And it's a very neat tool to use to inspect like just various information that the notifications actually give you. So in this view, what we did for ourselves is we, when we sent, uh, when we collected the data in Solometer and sent it to Elasticsearch, uh, we queried our, using the command interface, we queried the resource ID of the instance that failed, and it gives you all the events and notifications that are related to it. Um, by default, it gives you like a, a dump of all, of, uh, all the related events and all the related attributes of those events. Uh, and, but what we did is we kind of dove into those events and we could kind of pick out certain attributes that would be useful in showing a view of how to debug your system. So what we found was that if you, the timestamp, the priority of the event, of the notification, the event type itself, uh, any error messages in the event type uh, were important to creating a view that would help 
uh, users debug their environment. Uh, so this is the view that we created in Kibana. Yeah. So we can, um, we can actually see here um, events are coming from different services, from Nova, of course, and, the, um, and Neutron here, with the port is mentioned. Um, we can also see the errors that are being presented to the user. Uh, this thing with the, the, there's not enough list available. There are not enough lists available. And uh, of course, the, the error that is um, actually happening on the host, which is uh, completely irrelevant because it, it failed because the image itself is, is broken. And um, you can not just see the, the error, but the entire process and the where exactly in the entire process it failed. Um, so this is a um, Horizon. Uh, most of the users, well, not most, but a lot of users are, are using Horizon. And uh, we should pretty much have the same functionality in Horizon as well, not just in Kibana. And uh, thanks to our colleague, um, George Piristriakis, we have, uh, who, who built this, this view for us. Um, it took him a few hours to prototype that. Uh, we, we have it uh, in Horizon now. Um, so in, in Silometer, we index everything uh, on uh, key traits. Uh, however, Horizon, as Gordon said, uh, need to query Silometer API directly and get all the information, um, all the events related to a specific resource, and then we'll get, uh, we'll get to show it when we drill down on, on an instance here. Um, so similar to Kibana, we can see all the events in, um, um, according to, uh, to the time and, uh, and the event and, and the, how the flow progresses. And we can also see the errors as well. We can see where and which step did it, did it fail. And we can also see where the um, events are coming from, from which service and from which component. Um, unfortunately, Nova is the, uh, is the only component that published um, notifications for errors. And um, the, um, the errors that we've seen coming for volumes, for example, um, didn't have any events tied to it. So as a first step, it would be really great that uh, all the core components, all the core services will, will send notification for errors. And um, this will improve um, the event flow and therefore provide a better context. Another point is that we should have a, we should have a schema. Uh, currently, uh, the data is identifications is kind of chaotic and uh, different components are using different keys to pretty much describe the same thing. Um, uh, in Silometer, we, we can remap the consistent schemas, but ideally we shouldn't. Uh, since now we have a viable view in Horizon, uh, we could uh, use this, the event definition file we have in Silometer to remap things. Uh, we can map different traits to fit the Horizon view, and uh, we're planning to check in this file as well. And uh, in future, we, we should be able to expand this functionality in Horizon, not just to, to, to other resources, not just to the instances. Um, so from a Slama point of view, some of the stuff we've been talking about over the past few design sessions is to add alarm to events. So when certain, say an event, um, say the status of a instance changes, you might want to trigger or an action immediately based on what you, what you hear, what you receive in Slometer. And that's something we've been discussing in the Slometer uh, design sessions this, this week. And there's also been talks about adding the ability to build metrics from events. So say you're provisioning an instance and it takes longer than 90 seconds, you might want to know how, you might want to know how long provisioning, some, some of your provisioning uh, actions take. And because the events in Slammer push through pipelines, that's actually something that we can viably do. Um, so that's our talk. I hope that kind of gives you a view of what you can do with some of the events in that OpenStack currently emits and what we can do.
do going forward. I hope you enjoyed. Oh, there's the questions. Uh, so we've been, I've been told uh, that you should ask questions there. Um, what's the performance like of using Elasticsearch instead of MongoDB? Uh, I, I haven't done benchmark on that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have a good I mean, answer for that one. The performance of querying on, <coughs> querying on any, any, as soon as you get to any kind of size of MongoDB, is just awful. Yeah. So, so I, I believe there are multiple places, like companies that have Elasticsearch running at a pretty right. decent scale. Interesting. But then that said, there's a lot of companies running Mongo at a cool. certain we'll scale. Cool, we'll have to try it. But yeah, but one of the good things about Elasticsearch is that it kind of forces you to, to avoid open-ended queries and you, can, you have to drill down on specific time ranges. So your queries do tend to be more performed because you have these forced restrictions. Um, what are the big differences between uh, Juno and Kilo in the implementation of Slometer? Can, can we use both, most of what you described in Juno? Um, so Elasticsearch was added in Kilo, so you won't be able okay. to use Elasticsearch. But Silometer and the events and all that, is that already in Juno? Yeah, so the basic yeah. fun, like functionality of events is available in Juno. Okay. There's a little more, more flexibility uh, coded in for Kilo, but the basic okay. premise of it is there. Okay, uh, two more short questions. Uh, the request ID, is that <clears throat> inserted automatically by Solometer, or who takes care of inserting that so that you can correlate events related to the same action? So the, the data that you saw, none of it was generated by Solometer. Uh, it's just everything we received from the various uh, notifications that the services submit. Okay. So, so that, that might be there for this, for, for examples we showed, but Again, there's like uh, inconsistent schema across everything, so okay. it might not be there. All right. Okay. And uh, final question: Have you guys played with uh, uh, feeding these into an event stream processing engine like Riemann or Apache Storm or anything like this? Uh, we haven't tried that, but one of the publishers, like in Slammer, you can publish to different sort uh, targets, not just the database. And we do have a Kafka publisher. So you directly could hook up Storm to okay. that publisher. And I, I believe some people are doing, it, doing that, not for events, but for metrics. Okay, all right, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Um, have we tried to uh, combine the events with a, a log aggregation tool? And can, can we correlate? Uh, the, the logs uh, aggregation together with uh, some kind of event ID? Have we tried or can we try? Have we? That's the, uh, have you made experiments in that, uh, expanding the, the data mining to uh, include logs? Because I think a lot of the projects which do not generate notification may generate log. Yeah. Um, I, think yeah, I think it could be a good supplementary thing, uh, but uh, we haven't tried that. Yeah, one of the good things about last, or from a last search point of view, it's just a document store, so you can pretty much dump anything you want in there. Cool, I think we're good. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you.